bit earlier. We have a read-mostly application, that means that we have one uh, central database and we have basically a distributed cache across uh, a huge web here with lots of machines. And uh, today we have a read-mostly, so about 99.5% above of all the requests coming in from our users actually only hit the cache layer and never affects the database. So actually, what that means is if we're going to need more power, more computing power, we just add on more web machines and then we can scale forever. We have an overutilized database and we need to increase the writing, capa capa <laughs> the writing capacity of the database by maybe a thousand times. How are we going to do that? And of course, the, the first answer that comes up is just to buy a bigger database. That's the, <laughs> the straightforward solution. Unfortunately, we already have the fastest database available today. So, um, uh, the hardware and the software we are running on at the moment is the fastest you can come up with today. So, uh, buy a bigger database uh, once it is great. So, if we're going to scale the writing capacity with a thousand times and we already have the fastest database available, how do we then scale? And it's only one solution to the problem, and the solution is partition. Exactly. That's the only way. And the straightforward solution would be to just install a thousand databases, and then of course we can scale by a thousand times in the right capacity. But uh, if we don't want the administrative overhead of a thousand databases, we could at least use the database, the gigaspace solution for partitioning the data and uh, get this right performance. So this is basically for our next generation web services. Uh, we are going to use the Gigaspace as the it's a complete data storage and uh, processing events container for all the user requests and all the data. So of course um, it's a problem to migrate the old system to the new system and so on. But I come into that. But uh, the number one argument for the Gigaspace solution. I would say is uh, scalability. No, I think. It's uh, one way of partitioning data and an easy way to get this kind of right capacity. But, uh, okay, if we look at uh, the system we have today, so this is actual uh, dependency tree of the service we have today, the Avanza.se service, and it's a dependency tree of the web container running on today's service. What is this on the left hand side? Uh, <laughs> 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 During the, no, 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 the mail service yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. system to the Gigaspace platform. And it's, uh, uh, if we look at the system today, on the right hand side we have the uh, system that we have today, and basically it's uh, the web service that we have today, and the big database, and some distributed caching, but it's straightforward and it's re read mostly, so it's uh, kind of easy. But uh, the new service would have uh, lots of more uh, rights to the database, so we just implement it on top of the old, old work. So we need to have something else. So therefore, of course, we're going to use the Gigaspace environment. And here I took the customer as an example. We're going to use uh, several space for accounts, customers, and everything that we have. And we're going to present on the new service. So uh, to start off with, we have this. Uh, uh, dream scenario, we have a pure cloud with the customers and we have customer service and the new Avanza web tier working against the services. And uh, I probably mentioned the mirror space earlier. I'm going to persist the data in a uh, municipal database. Uh, and this, of course, is the dream scenario. And if we today should have started writing the code, we have, uh, of course, defined it as the last time. So now we have the old data system, and this is going to work in parallel. So it's uh, quite a big of a challenge to uh, make the benefits of the new technology and in parallel use the old technology. So therefore we have implemented several steps, and it's not that hard as it looks, actually. Uh, to start off with, when we load the customer space, as I was mentioned earlier, it takes 20 seconds to load all our customer into uh, customer space and we have 350,000 customers and reload the space with the data and um, uh, the next step would be to persist the data in the old way 
So to start off with, we load the space with the, the original customer data, and we have a mirror space persisting the data to a new MySQL database structured in Hibernate mappings, um, straightforward mapping to the old uh, domain objects. And then we also persist data on the old way. So the uh, old the legacy system could read the data written to the space as well. So it's not that hard as it looks to change the old legacy systems to write the data to the, to the space instead. And all the other 5,000 integration points can work as they always have. Of course, they won't gain the benefits of using the space technology, but it will work in parallel as it has always been. So it's no different there. But the new system will gain the performance, the failover capacity, the scalability, performance, everything from the gigabase platform. And then, of course, oh, uh, in the last step, we get rid of the old Amazon service and then get rid of the old implementation. Okay, and then we have a pure domain based system persisting in the Hibernate way to uh, MySQL database. So, so I would say the argument two and three would be structure. You're actually forced to have a domain object model that uh, actually suits your business needs. You should have had an object model to start off with, but uh, I guess most, most of our legacy systems don't have a domain model that suits your business needs. So that's why you have a problem uh, developing new features because your domain model don't fit. So you have to tweak every time to get new features out all the time. But if you have a good structure in your code, you can actually increase the speed of development. So this is how you would have designed your application to start with. But uh, the Gigaspaces force you to use some kind of domain module. And I think that's uh, actually a benefit of the product because it forces you to uh, structure your development in a way that you can actually increase the functionality quite easily when you're done. And it's easy to implement the step-by-step -step approach because the platform provides you with lots of tools so you can plug in the initial load, whatever initial load you like. Out of the box it comes with a standard event mapping, but uh, you can write whatever connections to your legacy system you like. So it's, yeah, you can write whatever. And also from a mirror space you can persist data out of the box, it chips with the uh, Hibernate mappings, but, uh, but you can use whatever persistent methods you like. So I think that's uh, one nice feature as well. And um, if we compare the systems then start with this system, and if we compare that with this system, what are some other benefits of using the right system from my point of view? Well, I think it's, from my perspective, <coughs> one of the most important things for us like, is the uh, cost effectiveness of the system. Today, I know we have uh, lots of competitors here, but uh, today in the market today, we have the lowest prices and the highest profit margin of all companies in this market. In this market. So, actually, the solution we shoes need to be really cost effective, otherwise we can't have the lowest prices and the best profit margin. So therefore, uh, one big benefit I see from using the GeoSpace product is actually reducing licensing costs. So, I would say this is the five arguments of uh, we using the GeoSpace today. But basically, that was my five slides, and uh, I guess you all have lots of questions. <coughs> uh, maybe one or two. Have you put all, all of your stuff in, into the Giga space? The front, the web front ends and, and uh, back ends and database stuff and everything? Or is yeah. it just the database part that you have moved? Uh, at the moment, we have only uh, so, uh, made to... some small proof of concepts. So, so at the moment, we are rendering graphs on the internet service from the space itself. So it's uh, just a small portion of the data and the functionality moved to the space. But the next generation website would be actually be running inside the cloud. Okay. So it would be uh, the web container, the data, the logic, everything would run inside the container to gain access to the fast writing capacities. What, what do you mean the cloud? 
Sorry? Which club? Sorry, it's space. <laughs> <laughs> the local space. <laughs> yes? So, <clears throat> so um, uh, when doing this transition, have you been using uh, the same staff as you had before? Uh, do you use a lot of managed services and professional services from Gigaspace? And do you need the same skill set of the people once you finish the transition? I mean, do you need the same amount of people? Um, That's a good question. Well, I guess uh, I, need, I need a fewer amount of people, as you say. But uh, it's, uh, of course, a different skill set you need. Uh, the old system was uh, purely uh, Java C based, and uh, you don't need to know about the Spring independence injection and everything. But uh, uh, so, of course, we need to educate our staff in Spring and Gigaspaces. But uh, such from that, it's the same staff with the same basic knowledge of programming as before. Yes, and it's uh, really a small step to educate people. We have send everyone on a three-day course and now they're up and running developing new services. So, so the, what we gain is actually ease of development and uh, if we could develop more features faster. And, uh, I mean, but more question about the scalability, perhaps this is more to the Gigaspace guys, but how much uh, performance scalability do you see that you get from moving the database aspect to the Gigaspace as compared to moving the database and the application to the Gigaspace. Mm. It's a, almost, a, it's, I think I, I touched on that, almost an order of magnitude because the, it's one gain to move the network from disk to memory. Uh, it's much bigger uh, gain when you move the application to the data and the application and the data together because a lot of the other actually I can't really picture myself, but uh, <laughs> you know, I'm trying to do here an interesting challenge. But uh, you can imagine that the number of iteration that you're doing back and forth from the application <coughs> to the data is where you lose a lot of the performance. So yeah. if you can push that piece, obviously the gain is significant because this you're basically translating ten network calls to one network call. Uh, versus if you move from disk to <coughs> memory, what you gain is Access to disk, let's say, is a thousand uh, per second at max. Access to memory is three thousand, four thousand, or a little bit more. It's more scalable. I mean, as, as you grow with scalability, you get also gain on that. Uh, so obviously, that is limited by the difference between network call to memory versus network call to disk. Versus if you try to push code to data, it's almost un unlimited in how much you could save because you have much more room to. So you get the best practices already built in. So if you do it yourself, it will be, I mean, it's always a question of what you compare to. So if you compare it to do it yourself, then obviously uh, finding out all those patterns, figuring out how to do it right, obviously getting all your developers up to speed with those patterns, which are only on papers, and they need to translate it to code. This is every framework that kind of streamline your thinking in a more holistic way to do the right things. And, and kind of uh, in that case, it's easier to do the right things when we get to go, versus again reading a lot of papers, finding experts, getting them, educating people, making sure continuously throughout the life cycle of the project that they're doing the right things and things in the wrong way.